The Chicago Bears have requested permission to interview defensive line coach Eric Washington for their defensive coordinator position from the Buffalo Bills. We're going to talk a little bit about that. Also, are the Bears the favorites to land Chase Young in free agency? We're going to talk about that as well as dive into the mailbag right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bears Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bears news and content. What's going on, Bears fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bears Central, your number one spot. For everything Chicago Bears delighted, I'm the host here, Hayes. More importantly, you guys can follow the channel at Shy Bears Central on every social media platform we happen to be on. With that being said, let's go ahead and get into the content for today. So the Chicago Bears have requested permission to interview assistant head coach and defensive line coach Eric Washington from the Buffalo Bills. And this is a guy who had been a coach here in Chicago previously in 2008. Uh, he was hired as the defensive assistant and was promoted to defensive line coach uh, in 2010. He then went on to the Carolina Panthers and was their defensive line coach in 2011, and he was promoted to defensive coordinator uh, after Steve Wilkes was named as head coach of the Arizona Cardinals in, in 2018. And then in January of 2020, he was hired by the Buffalo Bills again as their defensive line coach and the assistant uh, coach on top of that. So uh, at the end of the day, this is a guy who's been around. Uh, he's a seasoned vet as far as coaching. Since 2008, he's been a coach. And it goes further back than that. He was actually the assistant coach of Texas A&M way back in 1997, and he uh, was in Ohio from 2001 to 2003. So this is a guy who brings a lot of veteranship to that court, a lot of experience to that uh, potential defensive coordinator position for the Chicago Bears. And so the Bears are continue their coordinator search. Now, while has not hit the ground running, much like the offensive coordinator position did where we had like five candidates interview within the first four days or something like that. Um, the, the Bears are still now researching and doing their due diligence to find their next defensive coordinator. And, and the fact that this is another person who has familiarity with the Chicago Bears franchise makes some sense. This is a guy who, who it, it makes sense coming in here. He's done some play calling, but again, not a whole hell of a lot of it. Um, but he brings that experience and brings some of that situational awareness that we need to help uh, head coach Matt Eberflew shore up some things that goes on with him. So, you know, that's something on the bright side, really, of the Chicago Bears, uh, you know, doing their due diligence here and looking for that type of player, I'm sorry, that type of coach to bring into their defensive coordinator position. The biggest question is, is like, what what are they going to do, right? When are they going to make this decision, is a lot of people asking, and how, how wide of a net are they going to cast? Is it going to get as wide as what it was, for example, with the offensive coordinator position? I think there's some questions around, you know, will they or won't they there? But, hey, the Bears, again, this is another guy who's solid enough. He brings some experience. Um, he's, he's not, uh, you know, any slouch or anything. He's also a hard-nosed coach on top of that. I can really see him, really, uh, the players really liking him. He'll help kind of build that brand of defense we like here in Chicago on top of that. So it, it makes complete and utter sense. So, you know, when it comes down to it, we knew that once the Bears pivoted from that offensive coordinator position, once they had that locked in, we were going to get a number of interviews for the defensive coordinator position. So this is just another one in that step. Um, how I, I don't have kind of the pulse on it like I did you know, with the offensive coordinator position. I had been saying from the beginning, I expect the Bears to really go about 8 to 10 deep on their offensive coordinator search. I don't know if they're going to go that deep with the defensive coordinator just because Matt Eberflus is expected to, to keep on with play calling responsibilities there. So, you know, we'll see what happens with that. Um, but yeah, this is a guy that, you know, I, I, I like, I think he can really do well for the team. Uh, he's not a big name, but he is a name that is known if you've kind of paid attention to his journey and with it, with NFL teams. Now there's some questions there though, on how good he is. The Bills defense has, you know, it, it did have a, a lot of sacks last year, which is definitely a, a proponent that they had 54 sacks this past season and they were one of the best in getting to the quarterback. So, you know, you're bringing in somebody with a little bit of, of cachet to their name. That, that has been on experienced defenses before. And like I said, the ties to the organization, that seems to be something that maybe they're looking for a little bit with this defensive coordinator position. So let me know what you guys think. As Eric Washington becomes interviewed for that defensive coordinator position, do you guys like it from what you know about him, the history that you've heard, like his background and how long he's been a coach? Do you really uh, uh, approve of that? Let me know what you guys think down below. But now, with that said, we got some started speculation on free agency. And this is kind of refreshing in the sense that it's not just built around Justin Fields and the quarterback situation to Caleb Williams, right? That's normally when you hear these national media people talk about it. That's all it's been. But ESPN's Jer Jeremy Fowley actually predicted that the Chicago Bears are the favorites to sign Chase Young in free agency. Now, he said this, direct quote, Chicago, in its efforts to bolster its pass rush, evaluated both Young and Sweat 
in the months leading up to the deadline. Sweat uh, landed a four-year, $98 million extension with the Bears, who could spend money in free agency to sign a pass rusher such as Chase Young. Now, we know that they did do their research on Chase Young. Some of the injury concerns, things like that, were kind of why they, they pivoted more towards Sweat than, than, than getting Chase Young. And, you know, it kind of is what it is there. But with that said, you know, being able to add Chase Young, especially the Bears do go like quarterback, wide receiver, quarterback, O-line, wide receiver, O-line with their first round picks, that's going to leave them to have to shore up some things in free agency. And Chase Young is a player that offers that a lot. There are, of course, injury concerns in the history around Chase Young there that you cannot completely overlook. And I understand that. But he's also a guy that, hey, he, he, he outright gets it. Like, he's a guy that when he's healthy and on the football field, you don't doubt what he can bring when he's on the football field, but you have those questions on, are they gonna, is he going to be able to stay on the football field? Like, that's the biggest questions around him. What he brings when he's there, you don't, you don't really worry about that too much. And so, you know, if the Bears, whatever, you know, what Chase Young's uh, market is out in free agency, uh, that, that is going to play a huge part in that. Uh, are the 49ers going to be trying to bring him back, things like that? Um, as they, you know, hopefully are trying to push towards the Super Bowl here. Uh, but Chase Young is, is a player that we know what he can bring. Chase Young isn't any slouch, um, and he can really, that chemistry already with Montez Sweat, knowing that those guys, maybe even Montez Sweat, could recruit, recruit him. The 49ers got him for a compensatory uh, third-round pick, so, you know, you got to look at that one. But between both teams, he played 16 games last season, seven and a half sacks, 25 tackles, and 15 QB hits, and he's still only 24 years old. That it would be the thing in all this, if that the Bears are truly the front runners to land him, um, is that the age there? He fits that timeline for the Chicago Bears. We've talked about that secondary. You got all young players that are 24, 23 in that secondary for the Chicago Bears outside of Eddie Jackson. We got the linebacking core here. And the Bears wanting to shore up that pass rush even more. You saw the effect that Montez Sweat happened when Andrew Billings, Justin Jones played better since Montez Sweat been acquired. Imagine if you shore up that other edge on the opposite side of that. That's when you really start getting into being able to evaluate Javon Dexter, Zach Pickens, being able to put them in a higher priority. You still got your veterans there as well, but and it's probably going to take some money. The bigger question is, will the Bears be willing to pay that contract? What would Chase Young be willing to take on years and money considering his injury history? And, and is that connection to Montez Sweat maybe give the Bears an inside edge on being able to sign Chase Young? We know the talent Chase Young is. It's why a lot of Bears fans actually wanted to see the Bears go after him at the deadline last year, right? We know the talent he has. That injury concern is the biggest thing. Could an incentive-based deal be the thing that brings him on there? We'll see. But I think the Bears trying to shore up that defensive line, the defense overall is they're looking to really make that defense that finished in the top half of the league after starting off in the bottom as they're trying to shore up that pass rush even more, which the pass rush, the pass coverage, there's a symbiotic relationship there. It can help each other. And so, the pressure that, that that line brings, it just makes everything easier. And so Chase Young is not somebody that I would hate at all if the Bears targeted. And even if they end up did have to spend some money, it's just what's going to be guaranteed on that deal? How much of it's incentive-based? And we've seen Ryan Poles get creative before. I don't think that Chase Young, is, he's not going to be one of those players after playing 16 games that I think is going to take like a prove-it deal or anything like that. So you're going to have to open up the bank. You're going to have to spend some money, and especially depending on how far the, the 49ers go in the playoffs if they get past the, the Detroit Lions and then go to the Super Bowl, uh, that price tag could go up even more for him if he has a big performance for them in the Super Bowl. So that's something you also got to look at and monitor as well. But I, I, I hope that the Bears are the front runners, And, you know, it, it would be a sign of Ryan Poles to basically say, hey, listen, we are shoring up this defense. We're going to make sure that defense is the thing that we can continue to be on. We laid a solid foundation down. I know you have Bears fans, and I see you guys in the comments that are really kind of down on, hey, Ryan Poles doesn't do enough for the offense. It's all defense, defense, defense. And I understand that. We got to definitely address that in this offseason. I think Shane Waldron coming in, they're definitely going to try to get him some weapons. But Chase Young could be a really good piece for the Chicago Bears. And if they truly are the front runner to land the 24 at that point going into the season, 25-year-old, well, he will turn 25 in the middle of the season, uh, a defensive edge. I mean, listen, you could do a lot worse, and it, and it just goes to show how much they're really to put forth to try to shore up this defense, at least in my opinion. As always, you guys can let me know what you think down below. Now, last night, Jim Harbaugh agreed uh, to become the, the head coach of the Chargers, and this has sent a lot of Bears fans to ask themselves, did the Bears miss out? And I know Bobby dropped a video uh, late last night on the topic. Um, you've seen articles and things like that. 
and I'm not going to spend a whole hell of a lot of time on it because Bobby Bobby did that amazingly. But because it's a daily episode, I do want to touch on it a little bit and just say, listen, Bears fans, it was always a pipe dream. And, and, and you know, it was always one of those things that, you know, because of the interest of Jim Harbaugh, because he was a former Bear and things like that, that, you know, everybody kind of overlapped and a lot of people kind of attached there how serious the Bears are about this coaching search that if they get Jim Harbaugh, it was never going to be that easy. And as I told you guys before, also is that Jim Harbaugh, uh, he's going to want a lot of control. And he's not going to get that, I don't even think, with the Chargers. But it was oh, if, even if the Bears didn't make that call, it was selling them on what they were going to do, what the future of the Bears is. Harbaugh is a coach that's won on every level that he's ever went to. And some of that is that he's also picked the right situations. He hasn't just gone to situations where it's been a lot of turmoil, a lot of questions around it. So I, I, I don't want to spend a whole hell of a lot of time on it. I just want to say that, you know, guys that are disappointed or say that the Bears missed out and why didn't they ever make a call, things like that, it was never truly realistic. And I think that all those rumblings that we heard were rumors, searching for headlines, things like that. And, I, you know, at, at the end of the day, if Jim Harbaugh wanted to be a Chicago Bear, if that was something serious that he wanted to be, I don't think that this front office would have hesitated doing that. If he would have made that known, now one could say as well, well, how do they know if they didn't make that call? Fair enough. And I can't argue that at all. But the decisions made, the, the Bears came out early and said that they're sticking with Matt Eberflus. They fired Luke Getze. We knew the path that they were going to go. Now, are they are Bears fans going to tie that if Jim Harbaugh comes in and has a great season uh, next year? Are Bears fans going to going to co- complain and, and whine about it? Absolutely. And I'm not saying that some of that isn't going to be valid in, in the case as well. When you talk about, hey, did our front office really do enough? They're joining a five and twelve team. The Chicago Bears won more games than the Chargers. So you know, you you got you, those questions are all valid. But the Bears made their decision. They stuck with it, and. We'll see where it ends up going, but this is something that definitely we could look at a year from now at the same time and say, why didn't we go out and get Jim? But we'll see. All right, let's get into the voicemails for today. we got three we're going to get into. This first one, this one's from Darius. Man, it's your boy Darius, man, out in Maryville, but true Chicagoan to the heart, man, diehard Bears, man. I just want to say there has always been a deeper issue than Justin Fields, as everyone can see. He has never had a uh, a fair shot, and and simply ask yourself, what is it that he can't do? Um, I believe he's shown physically that he can do everything needed from a QB. Why start all the way over with Caleb Williams? There are so many variables that we already know about Justin. So many variables that we do not know about Caleb Williams' character. Uh, is he a good teammate? I mean, he may be, but those are variables that we don't know. What do we know about Justin Fields? He has that locker room. He has us as fans. Man, go ahead and build the juggernaut. Trade down. Get Marvin Harrison and some Chicago up there down. The issues are deeper than Fields, 100%. 100%. There, there was more going on with this team than just Justin Fields, but that's not to say that some of Justin, of what Justin did, absolutely played a part in that because it did. And so – you know, when you look at it and, and when it comes down to it, the Bears, they got to make their decision on what they're going to do. And like I've said, there are positives and negatives to both sides, uh, whether you go with Justin, whether you go with Caleb, whether you go with a different quarterback, there are, po- there are positives and negatives to all of it. But it's up to this front office to make that decision. And I, But I, I agree, like anybody who's just blaming it on Justin Fields is missing the forest through the trees. Anybody who's just blaming it on Luke Getze is doing the same thing. It's a combination of a lot of things going on. But what the front office had to ask themselves and had to come to the realization on is, is the, the problems that we see with Justin, is that something that we think that a new quarterback can, can, I mean, a new offensive coordinator help develop out of it? That's if they decide to stay with it. There are tons of variables, as you said, with Christian Wood. I'm not Christian Wood. Why am I ta- ta- thinking basketball? With, uh, there are tons of, uh, with Caleb Williams. There are tons of, of, of things there. Anybody who's saying, and, and this is, the problem isn't with Caleb. The problem is with people who attach this thought process between Caleb is just the guy. He's going to be coming in. He's going to be ready to go and act like Caleb doesn't have flaws. Caleb has flaws as well, and some of those flaws are the same flaws that Justin Fields has. But what this front office is going to have to evaluate is that, do you think that Caleb is going to be able to get past that faster and be more consistent than Justin? So we end up seeing, you guys know, I'm a Marvin Harrison Jr. guy. Draft him, shore up that offensive line, see what we got there. But we'll see what this front office does. And like I've been saying, it's all about just making the right decision. Regardless of what side of the fence Bears fans sit on, you make the right decision, they're going to rock with you.
Let's get into this next voicemail. Uh, this one's from West Side Trap. Yo, what up, Hayes? This is your boy, West Side Trap. I was calling in because I want to see, did you hear the uh, Cap interview with uh, Keyshawn Johnson? I just wanted to pick your brains and uh, see what your thoughts about it was. And Keyshawn points on why the Bears should keep Justin Fields and his thoughts on Kayla Williams about him being basically – him being a USC alumni, he's able to say Caleb, basically saying Caleb in so many words is not better than Justin. Like, and how Cap was just study trying to defend Justin and make it seem like, oh, all Chicago people that is delusional who want to keep uh, Justin Fields and we just rooted against uh, Caleb Williams. So I just wanted to hear your thoughts on uh, the whole Cap interview with Keyshawn Johnson and see what your thoughts were. Chicago up, bear down. Keyshawn Johnson's thoughts on Caleb Williams and Justin Fields, and it kind of goes to what I said before, is that anybody who's saying that, oh, Caleb is just the guy, and even the people who are echoing, oh, generation, watch, I, I guarantee you a lot of the Bears fans that are talking about it haven't actually watched the game of Caleb Williams because, and again, this is not to say that Caleb doesn't have absolutely positives, he does, I'm strictly, I'm not talking about the people who are fans of Caleb, who have watched him play and can say, hey, yeah, he has flaws, but I think he can be better than Justin, not talking about those guys. I'm talking about strictly about the people who haven't watched a single snap and are just going off the narratives built by the mainstream media that, that haven't watched a single game of Caleb Williams play to really look at some of those flaws and that think, oh, we just flipped Caleb with Justin. We're good to go. No, Caleb is going to have things he's going to have to grow and develop as well. If he ends up being the pick by the Chicago Bears, it's not going to be this thing where he automatically comes in and just every bit of Every question that we had around the offense and things like that is all question, uh, answered and, thing, and we're off rolling off to being this Super Bowl caliber team. It's not that. And I'm strictly talking about the people who talk about it and try to paint it in that light. Look at Caleb Williams' production against top defenses in the, in a, in the in collegiate football. It leaves a lot to be desired there. You've seen some of the big games he has, like I said, some of those same flaws that Justin does. And what this front office has to really decide on is that the, those flaws being there, do we think that Caleb can get over those more than what we believe Justin can? And if the answer is yes there, then draft him, right? If the answer is yes there, then draft him. But you're also weighing it against what you can get back for that number one overall pick and how it helps your team overall. And so that's a lot of things. And like I said, I, I never want to oversimplify the job that the front office has in this because it is a difficult job. And it is one that you got to really ask yourself questions on. It's just some people are trying to speak about it from a informed place when really they're just echoing what they hear from the national media. And I love that Kay that Kayshawn Johnson talked about some of that, right? And so it's not this clear-cut thing. Yes, he's the shiny new quarterback, and that's always going to come with its own luster. And like I said, the guy has talent, absolutely has talent. And so the front office is in that position where they got to answer that question. And we'll see what ends up happening with that. But like I said, anybody who's trying to pay Kayla Williams is just this perfect quarterback. You, 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 no, there, no, there, no one's perfect, right? And like I said, the size is the thing there when you look at him being 6'1". Um, but overall, like, you, you got some of the questions there to ask yourself on. And that's what this front office's job is over the next few months is to eliminate those questions by workout, things like that, training, talking to coaches, and let's see what they end up coming up with. All right, let's get into this last voicemail. This one's from Brian. Yo, what's going on, Hayes? This is Brian from Indiana. Just want to say I appreciate the content, but uh, I got two questions. One, uh, I know we hired Shane Waldron, which means we didn't get Cliff Kingsbury. I've seen he interviewing for other teams. So my first question is, if Cliff Kingsbury goes to one of these teams that needs a quarterback, do you think that kind of gives the Bears leverage? Because you know he's going to be shooting for them to get Caleb. I don't know. Just something I'm thinking about. I'm on my way home for work, but uh, just let me know what you're thinking. Then my second one is, uh, Mel Kuyper, who is funny looking ass, cause he ain't, he, all he do is miss, but, uh, he said we could get the eighth overall for Justin. I don't know, man. I mean, kinda gotta, kinda gotta take into account what that could do for our team. Uh, I don't know. Let's say that is true. We can get the eighth. What do you do with it? Or do you even think that's something that we should do? Me personally, I mean, I'd take it. We get Caleb at one. Maybe get Malik Neighbors at eight, and then maybe we could honestly flip that ninth. Maybe go get a go get a center, go get all lineman, a D lineman, or something. Or we could just use that to get some picks, especially because we ain't got a second round pick. But uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, let me know what you think. Shout out to the guys, and you know it is Chicago up, bear down. I don't think 
that Cliff is as tied to Caleb's future as what some people are making it. I just don't. Like, I get why that a storyline piece, and I get why that's there, and I don't think it's as tied to Caleb's. But, of course, the storylines, the writers are all going to tie it into that. Now, as far as Mel Kuyper saying that the Bears can get the eighth overall pick for Fields, listen, if that's true, if that's what the Atlanta Falcons are on the phone with the Bears saying, hey, we got number eight overall for you, that gives Ryan Poles another set of data that he has to look and weigh out. Because, if you can walk away from this draft with two, I mean, three picks in the top 10, listen, that, that, that's franchise changing, right? And so um, I, I, I want to attack this from being open from all angles, and that's what Ryan Poles has to do as well. Um, and that's the decision that they have to make. Keyshawn Johnson, though, I love what he did. I love what he said. And uh, at the end of the day, I think, you know, it is what it is. But Cliff Kingsbury, I don't think he's as tied uh, to, to Caleb, as we said, and Mel Kuyper, Kuyper's going to Kuyper. He's funny looking. It is what it is. But guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure you guys are following the channel at Shy Bear Central. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns, chicagobearscentral.gmail.com. And then lastly, if you want to leave a text message and our voicemail for the mailbag, the number to do so, 773-242-9336. We are the number one spot for everything Chicago Bears related, thanks to you guys. And like I liked in every episode on, Shy Town Up. But bear down. Love you guys. Peace, y'all. This has been a presentation of the Break Break Media. Break, 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 break.